So I'm rinsing my paintbrush off um, and drying it with my paper towel. And I'm going to go and I'm just going to take a little bit of my Flato blue, just a tiny bit. It's super powerful, this blue. So you only want like a really small amount on your brush. And we're going to take that and move it into the white like this until we get something that looks like um, the ocean, that color. And you're not going to worry about blending it perfectly. In fact, the fact that it has those streaks of color makes it more interesting. So we're going to take our streaks. And when we make these streaks, we're using, see how my paintbrush has kind of got um, like an angle, like a screwdriver. Do you see that? I'm waiting because there's a delay, so I don't know what you're seeing. Let me um, just hold on a minute here. I'm going to move this closer to the camera. Okay, so you can see that point now, right? So I'm just going to turn my paintbrush sideways like this so I can get these streaks. You don't want it turned this way because you'll get that. Okay, so you want it turned to the side like that so you get these nice streaks, right? So you can start up in the upper left-hand corner. Less is more. Don't worry about overlapping the uh, umbrella a little bit. That's okay. Let's make some short and long streaks. And you're just really light pressure on your paintbrush. Really light. And we're kind of doing a brick pattern so it doesn't look too... Uh, you know how bricks are. So you do that and then you do one in the middle and like that. Don't worry about if you're not, um, or if you're running out of paint. And then we come over here and we're doing the same kind of thing. Real light. Okay, and I'm even going back with a little white, more white this time than blue. And let me know if you're okay, if you're all caught up. I'll wait. Okay. So I'm going to go back in with a little white just to break up the, the oh-so-blue color of Flato and just get some lighter blue in there. And actually, I pressed a little hard on that streak, but that's okay. I'm going to go back in with some white. And what I have on my paintbrush right now is mostly white. So I'm not dipping in my blue at all, just the white. So it's kind of just a willy nilly kind of thing. You're just enjoying the color that you're putting down this uh, cerulean, I'm sorry, this Flato blue is my favorite blue in the whole entire world. It's so oceany. It's like it came straight from the sea. Yeah. So yeah, as I said before, you don't worry, want to worry too much about if you overlap your umbrella, just don't overdo it too much. And then over here by the arm, um, if you get a little bit on there, you can just use a paper towel. So I'll just show you how to correct something. You just take um, the corner of a paper towel like this and just dip it into your water like that. Just the corner, not too much water, and just go in and kind of rub that out. Because red painted here will pretty much 
um, cancel this out. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead because that's actually some very strong blue. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that out. Yeah. Uh, another coat of blue will kill that overlap. What are you guys listening to on the radio? Or on the, <laughs> the radio? Who listens to the radio anymore? Anybody? Uh, just in the car, I guess, huh? Anyway, what are you listening to? Tell me. What are you listening to? I get to listen to nothing because I don't want the video to cut off. And yeah, so as long as we've got those deep, dark blue streaks in there already, now we're just doing the white. Just to uh, give the canvas like a, a finished look. Just kind of going in between with that white. So yeah, that's our blue rain. If Bonetta was here, she would say, we need some purple rain. <laughs> Those Prince lovers out there. Okay, so how come I'm not seeing any more comments? I know why, because I have to open this up. That's right. Okay. No, because you guys are not making comments. That's why. Y'all are too busy painting. Stop painting. Tell me what you're what you're listening to. What are you drinking? What do you have on? What are you wearing? Oh, okay, Brittany. Maru 5, okay? Like, I have no idea who that is, but uh, thank you for sharing. <laughs> oh, I'm going to feedback. Turn it off. Okay, there we go. I'm sure that was very annoying. I didn't hear that uh, na noise that was going on. I was too busy talking, running my mouth. Okay. So, Laura, I want to hear from you. What are you doing? Oh, I have a little area over here that I completely skipped. So I'm just going to overlap a little bit. Okay. So I'm not going to move to anything until I hear from everybody, like, I'm caught up, wait for me, I'm drinking wine, I'm drinking coffee, I'm drinking water. So, we'll move to the next color, color when I hear from all of y'all. We are done. I have to focus on your instruction, so no music for me right now, okay? Brittany, Tammy, okay, good. Rachel, you're done, okay, good. Laura, I'm con she's always concentrating. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> that's good, that's good, that's good. Okay, so hopefully I've done everything by the laws of the Facebook gods, so they will... Uh, not cut us off today like they've done in the past. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, we're going to use, I just like to save the best for last. So why don't we do, we're going to do skin tone next because we need to do skin tone in order for us to paint our hair because we want our hair to overlap our skin or the lady in red skin 
So how we're going to do that is we're going to start with our base color. So again, when we are mixing paint colors, um, we're going to start with the least dominant color first. And in this case, it's going to be white. And we should probably only need like a scoop like this and just put it um, on your palette away from the blue. Uh, make sure you clean out your brush. And you should have your paper towels nearby. And then dry that off. The next color we're going to add is just a smidgen of yellow. And you can go to your smaller brush now. You're not going to need your big fat brush. You're going to need your medium sized brush. This one. Okay, so how much yellow are you going to use to the tip of this brush? That much. That's not a lot at all, right? So we're going to put that there. And I put it up top just so I can make sure I'm not putting too much. Because you want to... Um, it's better to add just a little bit of color and increase the amount later because you certainly can't subtract color. So should have a color that looks like um, like a lemon meringue. Okay. And to that, we're going to add. Just a touch of red, and I'm not cleaning my brush because I'm a bad girl, but you should. So you just take like a little bit of red like this, but we're not even going to add that whole amount. We're going to tap off on our paintbrush over here first. Actually, we might need that whole amount, but yeah, I think so. So just go ahead and add that here. And actually, I'm probably a little more. Now I've got like a really light pink. So that would be the basis for um, a pink skin tone. Okay, so maybe you want to add just a touch of brown to give her a little tan. So it's the same kind of thing, a little bit on the tip of your brush. And add that into your kind of uh, flesh tone your foundational flesh, uh, flesh tone. So essentially, the more brown you give the color, the more melanin you put in the color. Okay, so now, so that's just like a regular um, skin tone, the lightest skin tone. And should I move this a little closer so you can see that? Okay, I'm going to add a little more because we've got a girl with a nice tan. So I'm going to take a little bit more brown. And you can give her whatever color you like. But remember, we have two. We'll do two colors. So this will be my lighter color. So I'm going to mix all this together. This is going to be the foundation of my Lady in Red. So it's like, it's going to be like a milk chocolate brown. Now, for people who are doing a lighter skin tone, um, that original color that we made, just, you could cut it in half. Oops. Cut it in half like this. So you keep one color for like where the light hits the skin. And then there's a darker color for the skin color that's in shadow. Okay. So I'm going to keep my um, foundational skin tone over here, the one that hits the light. And then I'm going to create a darker skin tone over here for the one that hits, that is in shadow. So I'm going to mix a second color of skin tone. And I have this amount of paint on my brush, but again, I'm going to put it to the side first so I can make sure it's not too dark. 
it's you know I can keep adding darkness to it until it gets the color I want so yeah so that's my shadow tone And that's my foundational tone. So that I don't waste this paint, because wasting paint is a sin. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start with a darker color. And I'm going to go out here and start on her shoulder. So instead of outlining the whole piece, we're going to work in sections. If you outline the entire piece, you're going to run into your paint drying and you won't be able to blend when you need to blend. So just follow the curve of the arm. This is the shadow. This is the darker color. So it's going to be next to her dress because that's where a shadow is created. And here where her elbow touches the dress. Now I'm going to clean my brush, tap off some of that water, and go and get my milk chocolate color, and go inside of there. Oh, Ginger wants to come in. So yeah, the reason, um, if you're just tuning in, the reason why I'm I have such a bigger canvas is so that you can see because um, and plus it keeps me from turning <laughs> the canvas sideways and stuff I'm gonna move it even closer and see if that helps and I'm hoping my top canvas doesn't fall over so I'm moving very slow and I'm gonna go let Ginger in while you guys are finishing up that arm. Oops. Try not to knock everything over. So stand by. I'm trying to tilt this down. Uh, how do I do that? Ah, okay. There we go. Oops. Okay. How's that? Is that better? Okay. that look okay that's good alrighty so same thing with our you know I'm gonna make this a little darker because I don't feel like there's enough contrast so I'm adding some more brown to my shadow color so that it's more um, there's more contrast that's all so, and we can always go back and add more. And so what we're going to do now is just go inside the dress, put the darker color closer to where the straps would be, and the dress hits her skin. And then just go ahead and uh, imagine that shoulder area. Don't worry about being exact because we're going to cover it over with, um, with, uh, hair. 
So, yeah, I'm worried about it being exact. And then for the center of the back, I guess you could, we could, you know, I didn't even think about that. We could just come in the center like that. Nina is watching. Oh, that's my granddaughter. Hi, Nina Pina. <laughs> okay, and then we're just going to go in and with the lighter color and blend that so it doesn't um, dry a hard line. And you know with acrylic paints that um, sometimes it takes more than one layer. So don't worry about if your paint looks a little streaky. I was just looking at um, my favorite um, store. Some people shop for clothes and shoes and stuff like that. And I look at Dick Blick's uh, art website and um, uh, other people's art on Pinterest and stuff like that. And gauche is something I got to try because from what I understand, you don't need several coats. It's really super opaque. So um, I'm dying to try that. So yeah, so your lighter color goes in the center. And yeah, we're just kind of imagining where her neck would be. Again, like I said, don't worry about it being exact because her hair is going to cover that. So same thing on the other side. We're going to go in and make that curve on her arm I make one arm I can't tell if one of my arms is longer than the other because <laughs> I just quick sketched this right before the broadcast so I I hope it's not because that would be awful Hold on, let me see if I can tell. Oh, it looks okay. All right, that's cool. Okay, cool. All right, and that's, we're done with skin tone. So the best thing to do is uh, we're gonna let this dry and then we can go back in with a second coat, you know, if you want um, a more, a less streaky look on your finished product. Um, so just, Make sure that when you're painting, your brush is not too wet, not too dry, just, you know, Goldilocks. <laughs> Hi, my Nina Pina. I was just thinking about you this morning, about how um, my granddaughter's been do doing art with me since she came in the world. And I am going to add a little more. Um, I have some white left, so I'm going to mix that in so I can get my um, my mid-tone skin color and just go in and fill this in. Acrylic dries pretty fast. In your instructions in your little box, one of the things that I mentioned that you could use is a hair dryer. So, instead of like, I know, like, Da Vinci and all those people in hair dryer, but boy, if they did, they'd be using them. Because it uh, speeds up the process. And um, go ahead and, like I said, keep fine tuning your um, color till it's the way you want it. Add more brown, add more yellow, add more white until it gets to be the color that you want. Go. I had to mix some more color, so this has a little more um, yellow in it, which is not what I wanted, but that's okay. And I'm 
oops, don't knock the painting over. I'm going in with a second coat because I just can't move on until I get these streaks out. It's driving me crazy. And also I'm kind of painting off to the side, so you will forgive me. One of these days I'm gonna get this right. Practice makes perfect. So, um, I want to tell you about uh, some ideas that I had for upcoming activities because I know that um, people have been asking me about things to do with their kids, you know, and um, Studio 928 is uh, focused on um, adults primarily, but we also um, do, my plan was to do activities for tweens to teens. Uh, starting at my grandchildren's ages, which are um, eight, I'm sorry, 10 and uh, nine and 10, and then seven, yeah, so seven and up, so seven and up. Um, because pretty much at that age, you know, they're really cool, they talk to you, they have philosophies and all that. They're easy to relate to, but at any rate, uh, what I want to do is do a Recycled Wednesday. Recycled Art Wednesday. So I'm going to stop for a minute because I know you guys are still working on your skin tones trying to get that right. Um, I'm going to show you what I have in mind. And for these projects... All you need is stuff that's laying around your house, okay? So as your kids create art, they are cleaning your house. So this concept is going to turn into a national craze. Wouldn't that be great if we just used what we had around the house to do art? So what you need is some cardboard, an empty box. This happens to be a, uh, you know, for a, whatever that is, a faucet. <laughs> <laughs> but it could also be the bottom of a cardboard box. I know you guys are ordering stuff from Amazon. So um, you can leave it um, like this. Oh, and then you need empty water bottles and scissors and some acrylic paint. Um, and you can create something like this. So what this is... Just um, some paint on the background. This flower is dimensional. It's made from the bottom of a um, water bottle. So that's what that is. We And I show you how to cut it out and everything. And then these are painted on. And of course we can do more than one flower. I just did this as an example. And um, I think maybe I'll try to do some roses or something, too. But, um, yeah, so we're going to do this next Wednesday. So, you know, it's free. I'm going to do it live. And I, you don't need any, I, you don't need to buy anything. I don't need to ship anything. You just need to find some cardboard. And um, if you don't have enough paint, because you'll need quite a bit, or just do a smaller uh, scape. Like, you could do something half this size. You know, and then still be able to do the project with me. Um, but yeah, if you've purchased the kit, you've got paint, you've got uh, white, you've got green. Um, in some cases, for this one, you may not have green. Um, if you bought a previous kit prior to this painting, you would have green. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do a fieldscape on Wednesday. We're calling Wednesdays now Recycle Wednesday. And we're going to do crafts um, built around... Things that are in your house. Okay? Already in your house. Um, yeah. So, just want to get that on your radar. And I will post the event um, after the painting today. Alright. So, let's do the hair next. We're going to do hair. Are you excited? Can you stand how excited you're going to be about this? Okay. I'm going to show you how to do realistic hair okay so i have to go over here because i left my my colors all the way around here okay so you're rinsing your um brushes off 
drying them off with a paper towel. Don't leave your brushes in the water. You'll ruin them. They'll start to crack. Ginger is back. <laughs> Stop. I'm not petting you right now. I'm busy. You want to say hi? Where are you? Oh, there. Can you sit right there? Sit. Sit. No, see, nobody can see you, Ginger. Okay. So now I am going to take some black. Everybody has some, right? You guys have yours in a little container. I want you to use your smallest brush as a scoop. Make sure it's clean. Rinse it really well. Dry it off. Okay. So we're gonna use um, we're gonna use black as our foundational color, and we're gonna take this slow because your your hair is going to determine whether or not your painting looks realistic. We're gonna go with the flow. <laughs> Laura says hi, Ginger. We're going to go with the flow of the rain in determining the angle on her hair. So in your drawing, if yours is like this, your um, uh, drawing is actually not pushing it close to the head. So imagine that there's a head right there. So this would be a little bit closer to like the neck that's in you, this area. So we're going to make our first line to indicate that. And I'm just pouring out some paint right now. And I'm wetting my brush. And I'm just going to take a real light amount of paint. Because we're not making any definitive lines right now. We're just kind of like figuring out that her head is somewhere in here. So the wind... would be somewhere like that. And we're going to curve these lines just to give us give ourselves an idea of how it's all going to go. Okay. We're not um, committed to anything in terms of these lines. Don't worry about them being perfect because we're far from completing this hair. We're overlapping the, ooh, I just realized I made a mistake. Bad Cheryl, bad Cheryl. Okay, first of all, you guys did not make this mistake, so you don't have to do anything. Just keep doing your thing. Um, actually, see this area right here? That's the dress. We need to do the top part of the dress before we finish the hair. Are you are you with me? Because if we don't, we lose some aspects of realism. And we don't want to lose that. Because the hair has to go on top of the dress. Does that make sense? And I... Uh, didn't allow for my paint or making this adjustment, I should say. Okay. So, yes, I'm switching gears. So I just want to make sure everybody's with me. So what I'm going to do is go in with my red now because we need to do that before we finish this hair. This side I'm not so much worried about, but this side, yes. So I want to do that before we finish the hair. So in order to do that, we're going to take our brush, smaller brush, pick up a little red, a lot of red. Okay. Now, this area 
underneath her hair, I'm going to be a little bit in shadow. So I'm going to divide this amount of red in half. And I'm going to add a little smidgen of black. See, it's just like the tip of my brush. Very small amount of black. Push that into the red. Okay, I think I'll put a little bit more. And again, it's just the very tip. Like you can't, you can barely see the black on the tip of the brush. So that's our dark color, darker color. And actually I want a little bit more black. So I'm adding just a little bit more. So that's what you do. You keep adding the black until it's the color that you want. And as we said earlier, it's a lot easier to add a darker color and it's impossible to take it away. Well, it's not impossible. You just wind up wasting paint trying to make it um, uh, lighter. So we have two tones of red here. We have the shadow color and we have the actual dress color. So I'm actually adding some more red because um i just want more more red i'm sorry more um black okay so now i'm just taking my edge of my brush the very tip it's real um like the last two hairs on my brush and i'm just going in there and i'm putting in my um my darker color of red And then right in the middle of all that, I am going to add my lighter red. So yes, I'm still using the same brush. I've just picked up a little bit of that lighter red and I'm gonna go in the center of this red. And just paint it real light. You're not pressing down hard on the brush at all. It's just like the first couple of hairs on the brush. And then I'm gonna continue down because this is where the dress is touching her skin. So it should be darker there, it's in shadow. Oh, I forgot to add my, um, my little fuzzy belt, but that's okay. So I went back in and I got my lighter color and I'm using that in the center. And my darker color. Is right here. Oh, that looks so pretty. And there we go. Ginger, no, you cannot paint with us. Okay, so let's go over on the other side and do the same thing. Might as well knock this out all together, right? So again, it's, as you can see, I'm just using the very tip of my paintbrush, just that little hair that's, you know, all the rest of the paint is sitting in that brush and I'm not even using it, basically. I'm just using the tip. That's why I can make these skinny, skinny lines. And I'm going along her arm where the colors are darker. And coming in with my lighter red in the center.
go. Um, should we go ahead and knock that dress out now? We're going to need some more red. So, I would like to get some feedback from you guys while you're here. Um, but let's go ahead and do this belt first. So, I'm going to add some more black to the existing red that I have that's darker. So it's almost like, ooh, I guess like burgundy is what we get from that. And I'm going to go in here along the waist area. And just paint in this little darker belt. So this is just another version of red mixed with black and you can even take it up a little further if you want some added shadow Okay, guess what? It's time for a bigger brush because we get to do some sweeping with this color. So we're going to take our bigger brush that we rinsed off and it's just a little bit wet. We're going to tap some of that off, pick up some more red, a little scoop. And I'm going to put it over here where my lighter red is. And now I get to do this dress. So we just use the end of the brush and just kind of sweep it out there. So we're going right along the line of this. do what I did. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. <laughs> uh, just go over here. Do the same thing. Create the, the line of the dress. Sometimes you just need to turn your brush in different directions to create an effect. And that's okay. So you can do whatever you want with the end of your dress. I'm allowing mine just to willy-nilly sweep in the wind. It's like one of those gauze dresses, you know. But you can make yours so that it's a different fabric, like the end of the dress could actually finish off cleanly, you know. So that's entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. So, I wish I could hear you guys talking. We got to figure this out so that it's more interactive. Because I know when you're painting... It's hard for you to be looking at your monitor or typing because you got your paintbrush in your hand and so normally I would pick up my canvas and um, you know finish off these edges but I can't do that 
it will disturb the transmission and you know I don't want to do that you guys you can imagine that when this is over I'm going to finish the edges so they look a little better now I need more red so I'm going to go ahead and scoop some more up And I'm going to add, guess what color? I'm going to add some black to it. Because now I'm working on the folds of the dress. What we just got done doing was putting the organza or whatever it is down. And now we're creating the folds in the dress. And they're close to the color of the belt. You know, we just want to swoop. Swoop, 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 swoop. And come over here and put some shadow in here. Oh, I forgot about this part of the dress. Well, that's fine, because it should be a little darker anyway. Because it's all folded up. Because it's all pressing against her leg. So it's fine that it's a little bit darker. Fix that. Okay. And actually, I'm going to move. Uh-oh. I knew I couldn't get away the whole video without doing that. So it's happened, so hopefully it won't happen again. <laughs> uh, there. There. That's much better. Right? There we go. I'm watching over here to see. Yeah, you can make your dress sweep up some more. Actually, hers in the um, in the image above is sweeping a little higher. So I'm gonna take this and sweep it up a little higher because the wind's really kicking. So that's good. Brittany, your Zoom is good. Never used it. Yeah, you know, but there's so many, um, here's so many crazy things about Zoom lately. I used it before too, when I used to do webinars. And lately, I guess it's, um, it's like a shareware, so it's easy to hack into. So a lot of, you know, those hacker people who don't have anything else to do but to disturb this, you know, <laughs> the fiber of, of all things good, you know, with viruses and all this kind of stuff. They have gotten in and started doing crazy things to people while they're live, you know, like families try to get live with their, with their, you know, friends and that and grandparents and they're getting on there and um, showing their private parts and crazy stuff. It's just, it's just absolutely crazy. Um, yeah. So I loved. I, in fact, that was my original plan was to use Zoom. So I'm trying Facebook, Facebook Live for a little bit, and then um, we'll see how that goes. Because I know I can download these videos, upload them to you, YouTube, so they can be. Um, reuse the only thing is that yeah so having that FaceTime with people is so nice you know because you know I'm sitting here alone too <laughs> you know well I'm sorry Ginger I'm here with Ginger she resents that remark you should see her face 
<laughs> She's so funny. And I love her. The other day I woke up and I, or yesterday, I woke up and it felt like she was like internally coughing. I guess dogs don't cough like, <laughs> like that. They cough internally. So, um, she was doing that and I got all scared. I thought, oh no, you know, I thought she caught the, caught the Rona. But, um, today she's fine. She hasn't coughed at all. So, I love her so much. She's my baby girl. Aren't you my baby? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Um, so, okay. Uh, I think. I'm going to go ahead, and actually it looks like um, I'm going to take my smaller brush. Okay, Ginger, that was enough love. Now go sit down. Go sit down in the living room. Go on. Go. Good girl. So now I'm going to take my brush, because it feels a little weird the way my dress is. It's almost like, um, <laughs> yeah, I came out too far or something. I just did the sketch so quickly. I didn't really... Probably think it out the best as I could. Bad Cheryl. So I'm putting some shadow under here so it makes a little bit more sense. What's that sound? And over here too. These are. I'm just blending this all in now. I'm using the side of my paintbrush in a weird way. Okay. Now we can go back to the hair. No. Go sit down. Go. Go. Go sit down. Okay. Alrighty then. So we're going to go ahead and do the hair because um, we do the hair now because it's kind of like almost underneath the umbrella. So we want that umbrella to overlap onto the previously painted hair. So let's go ahead and uh, make some squiggly lines out here on top of the hair. And the way we get a squiggly line, okay, so you don't want your end of your paintbrush fat. It has to be thin. And the way you do that is just by dipping into the paint. Your paintbrush should have a nice point. Like that. Okay. So, and then just do this slow. Don't try to move too fast. And we're just, we're just giving ourselves an outline kind of of where the hair is going to live. Because believe it or not, this is all going to get painted in black. I just want you to get your practice in with making these squiggly lines because you're going to make these squiggly lines throughout the rest of the painting. So, might as well get your practice in now, right? So, top of the head. Oops, my too much paint. So, I'm just thinning that brush out so it's nice and thin. And I'm going to do like a little line like here because the wind is just blowing my hair. It's just flying away. <laughs> My grandmother or my granddaughter's like Grandma Cheryl. Okay, so we're going in here. Okay, 
And now, this is the fun part. Oops, I got too much paint in my brush. And I'm making sure I got my curly lines going on. I gotta have the curly lines. Curly lines. Now we get to paint all this in. Paint it all in. Just paint it all black. Or whatever color your foundation color is. Now, the reason why I use black as a foundation color is because her hair is basically dark. But if you wanted to... Well, we're not even going to go. It would be a, a totally different palette if you wanted to make her hair like blonde or something like that. If you wanted to make her hair blue, then you would use dark, dark blue. Flato blue as the foundational color. And then you would come on with some lighter blue on top. That would have been fun. I should have done that. Oh, well. Too late now. Actually, I could give her some blue streaks. Yeah, we just paint all this in now. It doesn't matter um, that we're covering up her little curls. We're just not going to the end. We're leaving those the way they are. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, we're just covering up right to where that shoulder is so we don't see that line anymore. We don't see the edge of the dress. All we see, I'm sorry. We, yeah, we don't see where the color stops, basically. And just use the tip of your brush and try to do some little curly curlies. And we're just coloring that all in. And there we have it. So for this area over here where we're getting close to like the edge, I'll leave that little lone hair out there by itself. And then I'm gonna put some more water on my brush so I can get a thin edge again. And I'm just gonna snake out some more little curls. The idea is like we have little flyaway hairs when the wind is blowing. You know, it gives the uh, impression of movement when we allow that hair to flow like that. Okay, so to continue with our attempt at realism, I am going to go back in and swirl out some of these. And I'm pressing a little harder now so that my brush allows for mm -hmm. like hairy strokes. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's more hair-like when um, your brush is a little frayed like that on the end. Then it makes the little um, hair like strokes when it's a little frayed like that. So, I am, can you see that? How that's working? It's more hair like. So you want to get as close to the edge as you can. And then I will come over here. 
here. I'm going to let one of these little hairs come loose like that. So, yes, this image has different hair. I have modified her a bit. And actually, I think I will come down here a little bit more. There. So, your painting is more um, built on this idea. So, don't worry about mine being different from yours. Just think about the reality of hair blowing in the wind. And you'll be fine. Okay, so now what we get to do is we're going to wait for the rest of this to dry. And fill in any little white spots you see. Because we're going to come back again with the color um, brown. And then we're going to mix the brown with some white and yellow. And then we're going to get those cool highlights that you see up there. But for now, while that's drying, we're going to hit that umbrella with red. Is everybody with me? I'm going to take a sip of water. So again, let me just explain that. Um, <laughs> who's angry? <laughs> Um, let me just explain that um, I just quick drew this this morning onto the larger canvas so you guys can see it better. Um, so mine is slightly different from yours. Her hair goes further into the umbrella than yours does. Yours is just right at the top, which that's just fine. You know, I'm just pointing out those little differences so you don't freak out. Okay, so my hair is still wet up at the top, so I'm going to start out here with my um, red. And, yeah. So, oh, that was your daughter? <laughs> That's okay, Rachel. <laughs> hey, you know, artists make a lot of people angry sometimes. Like that guy, whoever that was, that paid... What, $2 million for that banana peel on the wall? Did you guys see that? Well, that made a lot of artists mad. Because it was like, seriously? And I forget, what did I see on... If you watch... um Watch... Molly Bloom. With Idris El Elba. Is that how you say it? Idris Elba? And I don't know who the woman is that played uh, Molly Bloom. But it is a good woman... A good woman movie... It's a power thing. I mean, okay, so the reason why I'm even bringing that movie up is because they were saying about how a certain amount of people in the world control not only money, but art. They determine whose art is going to be popular. They're, they determine who's going to eat and not eat in the art world. Um, well, you know, in terms of millions of dollars. And... Um, so that's how that banana peel staple to the wall or whatever it was <laughs> sold for, you know, however many much, how, how much money it sold for or millions of dollars. Um, but Molly Bloom is a great, great movie. Um, it, it's about a woman using her brains and just everything she had to go through to, um, you know, with her father, and it was just a good movie, and it kept my attention, like, it's really hard for movies to keep my attention these days, because I'm so focused on, um, you know, bringing art to the masses, and paying my lease, <laughs> so I'm very hard to entertain, so when something entertains me, it's good, it's good, okay, so I have mixed my color, for, and I what I did was, you know, I took my red and I mixed my black in because I want to do the shadow first. So I'm going to just go here and I'm putting my canvas, my hand next to the canvas and just pulling slowly 
in a straight line using the edge of my big brush. Okay. And then I'm using the edge of my brush. Come in with that second line. And then I'm overlapping my hair because mine is drawn differently than yours. And I'm actually going to come back and fill this in. And I'm picking up some more pure red. And I'm going in the center. Trying not to knock that thing off the top again, that canvas. Oops, I went out the lines. Well, I'm going to fix that just by doing that. So, of course, it'll take me more than one layer to fix my, um, the show through of the color underneath the umbrella of the hair. But that's okay. So I'm going back with my, uh, I have to stand up for this <laughs> so I can get this line right. But, uh, basically just going down. And actually, I can't tell if this is straight until I see it on the on the computer here. So, because I'm painting from the side. So I am just going back in with my solid red and I'm cleaning my brush off so that I can paint with pure red. Oh, why did I do that? Sometimes I just ugh, drive my own self crazy. So. Now I have to pay for my mistake. Yes, artists make mistakes too. Sometimes they're happy mistakes. Sometimes they're not. <laughs> they're happy accidents. That's what Bob Ross says. So now I'm going to go in with, um, I'm going to take my red and mix a little black in with it. And I'm gonna use that, oops. I'm gonna use that to create my little arches in my umbrella. And they don't have to be 100% um, defined, they just need to be um, kind of there. So I'm rinsing my brush. I'm going to blur that line because it's, I don't want it that defined. So I'm just going to take this cleaned brush and I'm just going to blur this line. And I'm wiping between, um, brush strokes. And I'll fix this later. Oops. I'm going to turn down this light a little bit because I'm getting a big reflection. 
See if that helps. Yes, it does. Cool. Okay, so next step is let's go in and uh, let's go in and finish that hair before we add our fuzzy fuzzy to the umbrella. So for this step, we're gonna start with some white. And I'm just going to use what I have. No, I can't do that because you won't be able to see. Okay, so I'm taking some white. And I'm just going to pull some of this over to the side because I, I won't need all that. And I don't want to waste it. And I'm going to add in some yellow. Like quite a bit. Oops. Wrong pile. <laughs> all right. Adding some yellow. It's like... um. I don't know what color that is, lemon, like, um, pale yellow, I guess. Now I'm adding in some brown. Adding in some brown. I'm going to put a little to the side so I don't put too much. And I'm actually going to split this in half because then I can have my other two colors already mixed. So I'm going to make one of these colors darker. I'm going to add some more brown to this secondary color, the second color I mixed. So we're going to have these two shades. And actually I think I'm going to put some more brown in there. Okay, so the strokes that we make now will count. So I want you to take your time, watch how I do this. These are gonna count. And actually, um, let's add just a tiny bit of red to this uh, darker brown, okay? So not this much, but let's take like half of that, put it over here with this brown. So it's more like a reddish brown. Okay, so I'm not going to use this paintbrush like this because it's too juicy with paint. I'm going to rinse it off. I see the real way you should do this is to use a palette knife. <laughs> um, one day soon, I'm going to put up a little store. And you guys can get all your little extra goodies from me. Palette knife. If you see one in the store on sale, get it. Oh, you're not supposed to go to the store. I guess online store. So we're going to take that um, reddish brown. And starting here, just using the tip, we're going to follow those curves we've already made. And I'm doing that. And as you can see, see, I should have started the, um, I should have finished my hair before I went to the umbrella, but I was in a, you know, hurry or something. And I just screwed it up. So I'm taking my time. It always looks like, you know, this happened real fast because, you know, it's in motion. But in actuality, it takes, you know, your takes you taking your time to just use the ends of your paintbrush, the little hairs on the end, to create these lines. And 
If you're not getting a point on your paintbrush, it could be just because you're not um, loading the paint in the correct way. You should be laying it on its side and kind of twirling the paint into the brush. And I'm just finding my existing curl pattern here and I'm just following it like this. And just follow the other, you know, follow the other hair that's there. And then towards the top, we're just making sure that um, they kind of line up. So these are highlights, you know, she's, she's not on lockdown. She got to go to the salon. <laughs> she had highlights. Now, your color does not have to be the same color as mine. It could be a darker brown. And in fact, I think I might even go in with some more brown. So this is not the end. Um, and then over here, of course, we want to start following this line. And again, I'm just using very tips of the paintbrush and if your paint is not flowing if you're not getting a good line it means you need to add just a little bit of water bring your point back And um, despite what I said earlier, it's not um, it's not a bad thing if this isn't perfect because we're gonna you know we're gonna give her like a real salon effect hairdo. So <laughs> we're gonna layer some brown in here, and you know we'll be able to correct any boo boos we've made. to not be messy I get a little impatient if I was doing this at home I'd walk away right now and go get myself something to eat or a drink or something like that because you do need to take your time to do this and you shouldn't rush through it so with that said I'll try not to rush through the curls <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to find this little curl right here, and I'm just going to go in there and
There we go. All right, right? Look at that. So um, now I'm gonna add some brown to my brown that I have, because I want it to be darker. So I'm adding some more brown. And you don't need to be as precise, but you're essentially going in, you're giving, um, you know, a third depth of interest to her hair. And, you know, you want to be, you just want to go in between the lines you've already drawn. Yeah, do that, um, brown, dark brown. See, that looks cool. How are you guys doing? Take a break, stand up and stretch. <laughs> Tell me how you're doing. So yeah, it's like the foundation of this painting does not take long at all. It's like, it's the little extras that you add in that take a little minute. So like going in, in between all of the strokes you already made and just adding in this brown to give the hair some depth. You know, it adds to, you know, makes it look a little more real, believable. Hi, Nicole. I haven't seen you in here. And yeah, so just going in between where that black is. See how the black acts as, um, it just gives the hair depth, even though on the surface, you know, the hair color is a little lighter. So yeah, so that's just the principle of hair. You know, if your hair is curly, um, it all kind of flows <laughs> in the same kind of a pattern. So um, it, it would make sense for us to follow the lines that we've previously drawn because hair seems to uh, stick together. You know, they're, they're family, <laughs> they all stick together. You suck at hair. <laughs> Just take your time. Take your time. Just use the very last hair on the tip of the brush when you're painting hair. And just lightly touch. Don't press down. It's hard.
And last but not least, I think I'm going to go in with one more shade, darker brown, just because I like to torture myself. Um, yeah, because the last thing we have to do is the... Um, is our... Um, what do you call that? It's not ostrich plume. What is it? That pink fuzzy stuff. <laughs> they have it on those little mule slippers. Ooh, when you go back in with the dark brown, it's really cool. Yeah, going with the dark brown after you did all that looks really cool. So it took me a long time to learn how to do hair. So by the time all is said and done, we'll get that hair down to a science. Don't worry. So all you have to remember is just that foundational color. You know, if it's blonde hair, then it has to be like a dark, dark, dark brown. And then you build on top of that. And then if you think about the way that the light hits the hair, you'll get it. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. So, actually, I'm going to go in here and put some shadow. Because her arm looks a little healthy. <laughs> I'm going to put some shadow over here. And I'll blend that in with some... With some... So yeah, so you can see that um, my skin tone still needs some another coat. And you guys can do this, you know, on your own time. Um, but yeah, if you want to have a finished piece that looks really nice, you want to give it another coat so you don't see those those brush marks. It's okay for the skirt. Because it just kind of looks like um, the folds of the fabric. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is our ostrich plume decor. And I'm going to get to that in just a quick second. There we go. And if I don't want this to look like I stopped right here, 
with my paintbrush and color, I can um, take some strokes of black and overlap where I've just painted, which I think I will do. Uh, maybe I'll start with a dark brown first. As, uh, if I make a mistake, it's not going to be easy to fix. And I have to make sure I got a point on my brush. So I'm just doing that. There. Okay. Alrighty then. Let us make some pink. Okay, so this is going to work in layers. Uh, we're going to take our least dominant color and create pink. I'm going to take some of that white that got left over here. And I have started a new palette because I just have a big old mess going on over there. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to divide this in half. Um, if you feel like you want to add another coat of red to your umbrella, now would be a good time. Because we're going to start right here. And I will give you a minute. Because I'm going to go and add in some more red. And I'm going to go in the direction of the shape of the umbrella this time. So, by the time we get up here, this will be dry. We can finish the edge of the umbrella. And there's a little tip on the edge of the umbrella if you want to add it as well. And of course, don't forget to sign your work. Okay, and of course, if this was a commission, I would go back and keep layering that till it um, blocked out the idea of her head underneath the umbrella. But I mean, in a sense, you would be able to see her um, head underneath if it was sunny outside while it was raining, right? <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of red and I'm going to put it over to the side. Okay, and before I touch that white, I'm going to rinse my brush because that's bound to be too much red. Red is super powerful. So in order to make this a pink, and we're going for a dark pink first. We'll go for a dark pink, and then we'll do a lighter pink later. To make a dark pink, I've put that much paint on my brush. And I'm adding it to the white. And I think I want it a little bit more. Well, actually, you know what? Um, let's go ahead and make some more. I'll take some more of this pink. And I'm making enough so I can make one dark, one light. Taking my red. And I'm going to put it over here. So I'm going to have two reds, or two pinks. Okay, this is tricky. 
So before you do it on the canvas, I want you to try it on the palette. If your palette's all gunked up like mine was, get a piece of paper, a weight, or a saucer. Okay. And if you have too much paint in your brush, your brush will be too fat and you won't be able to do this. So as much as you can, wring out your brush by just twirling it around. If you saw what I just did, wring it out. Okay, we don't want to dip again because uh, we don't want to rinse it off because we just don't have that much paint left. At least I don't for this. So we're just going to go to the center. Oh, here, let me show you. So we're going to um, just take the tip of the brush and we're trying to create, and I'm just using the hairs on the tip of the brush. I'm starting from the center and pushing out very lightly like that okay so practice a couple of those make sure your paint is uh, kind of fluid you don't want globs of uh, color on the end of your brush you want just like a, like an ink pen effect so you can make this as big as you want start from the center go out it's gonna look weird at first, don't worry about it. You got layers. And you can make like make it a little curved. So I'm going to add some more, I'm going to take my brush and just pick up some more red. And I got my point back. So I'm going to go in and streak this on. Okay, that's, here, you know what, I'm gonna, let's pick up some white. Let's pick up some white. And just layer that on top. And then once we get this white laid down, we can hit it again with some red or pink. So the good news is that we didn't cut off today. <laughs> I've learned my lesson, stay out of Facebook jail. Um, don't play music in the background, which is bummer because it sure would be nice to hear some nice music while you're painting. Okay, so is everybody with me? Has everybody put another coat of red on their umbrella if they wanted to? Can you let me know? Because my white or my red is pretty much dry i'm gonna go back up to the top and add my first layer of poofiness to my umbrella okay <laughs> is that natalia again giving me the angry button <laughs> or <laughs> rachel that was your daughter <laughs> she's like no i'm not ready yet wait for me okay so, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up mostly white so we can see where we are with laying down um, the color. And again, you can't accomplish this look if you have too much paint on your brush. So, there should be no paint on the tip of your brush. I mean, not paint that you can see, like a big chunk. It should just be discreetly there. Okay. So, and this is how it goes. So we just start making um, poofy lines or, you know, like little lines. This way and that way and this way, that way, and this way, up and down, but always from the center. So your paintbrush starts here, it goes out that way. 
the paintbrush is there it starts that way there that way this way okay so you start from the center and go out okay Don't worry about this because this is just the first pass. <laughs> Me ready. <laughs> All right, good. You guys are hanging in there. So yeah, just start from here, push out, push out, push out, push out, push out, push out. From the center, out, from the center, out. And now, so when we get close to the hair, of course, we're just going to overlap it because if my umbrella had these little fuzzy things on the edge, it would um, overlap my hair. So we're not worried about that. It gives it air of realism. So you can use your dark pink or your light pink. It doesn't matter because we're layering it anyway. So... Um, just use the tips of your brush. That's all you need to remember. Just use the tips of your brush. You're making little hair-like strokes that start in the center and fan out. Not a lot of pressure. You're just stroking. Okay. Okay. So by the time you get to um, the end, your other end should be pretty much dry so you can go in with your second coat oh i hear the mail lady Okay, so uh, we want to go ahead and fill that in as much as we can. We don't want it to look um, sparse. You know, we want to fill that in. So it may take you two or three passes. So I'm coming back this time with white with just a tinge of pink. And if you don't have a tip, then you just twirl your brush until you get one. Twirl the tip. And here we go. And as you do this, try to hit the spaces where um, you're still seeing red. You want to cover that in so that you see. And then, like I said, just make sure you're changing direction. A little that way, a little this way. A little that way. And always start in the center and push out towards the end so you get those nice pointy ends.
And yeah, you can actually just go along and fill some of those spaces in. And I'm actually going to hit this again with some um, uh, with some red, I think, or some pink on top of the white. Ginger, are you not going back outside, kiddo? everybody you know who I'm not seeing is Denise Denise Hamilton she purchased a kit but I don't see her online well that's the good thing about recording is that um, she can watch it later So again, we're starting in the center and we we flick our brushes out to get that, that ostrich plume kind of effect. No, it's not ostrich. What do they call that? Um, they put it on those slippers. Um, oh, what do they call it? I don't remember. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to go back again and I'm going to give my, um, my little belt a little more depth. And you start from your center, work your way out. Keep it kind of curved. And get as wild as you like with that. Ooh. So, you know, one of my favorite movies is The Grinch. It makes me happy. So I watched it yesterday. And finally, last but not least, I'm just going to put uh, some red on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to go back over here and just do some tip of my brush stroking. Just the last hair on my brush, I'm going to go in and make some, like, stars of color. Just overlapping a little bit. Here and there. Everywhere. I guess these could be like X's. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. So I hope I get to see your work when you get done. I um, You can post it right here or post it in um, on the Facebook page or the group. Both. All of the above. That 
That's me getting lazy at the end. Yep, you hate that movie. <laughs> I love Jim Carrey. I love Jim Carrey. Now, you're not talking about... Are you talking about the Jim Carrey one you hate or the newest one? Because I don't like that one. I mean, I, it doesn't hold my attention the way um, the um, Opie Taylor version does. <laughs> uh, Ron Howard. Because <laughs> he has all these hidden... Um, uh, you know, adult references in, in that movie, you know, where they're having the party where the Grinch is dropped off, you know, where he, he's born and they're putting their keys in a, in the swab jar. I'm like, you know, there's, that just, <laughs> see, kids don't pick up on that. And then years later, they'll be scarred for life. They'll be like, is that what was going on? That's so funny. Okay. So, and I put a little more pink in here. Pink, pink. More pink. Everything Grinch. <laughs> See, you just haven't watched it the right way. That's what the problem is. Okay, so it looks like I have to go a little darker with this pink for it to show up. There we go. All right. Everything Grinch. You don't like the Grinch. How could you not like the Grinch? <laughs> So anyway, that's my movie recommendation is um, Molly Bloom. I saw the previews and I was like, no, I'm not watching that. You know, even though Idris Elba was in it, I was like, nah, I don't know. Nobody got time to watch movies. And then my husband put it on. I, I was I was riveted. I could not look away from the screen. That's how good that movie is. Um, okay, so if you didn't hear before, I know you guys are finishing up your paintings. If you didn't... Um, here before on Wednesday we're gonna do a recycle Wednesday so that means you just grab some stuff from around your house I'll tell you what you need today but I'm gonna post an event so that you guys can bring the kids this is a kid event um, eight years and up I think can handle this but we're gonna do um, uh, we get all that you need is a uh, some empty recycle bottles okay water bottles and then you just need a piece of cardboard. Like I used a piece this big, but um, you could use a smaller size. Uh, you know, like you could use half of this. And then we're just painting the background. We're making these beautiful clouds. And then this is um, the water bottle. This is the water bottle. And then we do uh, some flowers and some grass. And, you know, it's a little project. So, Recycle Wednesday, and I hope to have some more recycled things that are a little more um, functional. So, something on my radar, I'll tell you, because I wasn't going to tell you, but then I thought, you know what, I'm going to tell them. So, something on my radar, my husband buys these for us. They're, um, they're what are these called? There's pomegranate, pomegranate juice. Pure pomegranate juice comes in these. And I every time I saw it, I'm like, I know something beautiful can be made from this. So um, what I want to do is um, cut these. And I'm going to make, um, uh, we're going to cut them in half and make them as um, light covers for those little tea lights that you have outside. Not tea lights. What are they called? Oh, my memory. Um... You know, like Christmas lights, but bigger. So the Christmas light will go in here, and then you cut it off right here, and we do paper mache on the outside and paint it whatever color you want. So I was going to do some things like that. But just recycled stuff, stuff that's around your house that, you know, like you almost want to save it because it's like, why do they make these uh, containers like this, and then they just throw them away. It's such a waste. So um, one thing we can do as we're um, sheltered in is just use garbage to make things because think about it like if we um 
You know, what time was it? You tell me what's a good time. You tell me what's a good time. Um, especially those of you who are watching who have kids. Because um, you can do it, but I also like to do something what the kids could do it too. But um, like if you think about it, what if we couldn't buy stuff anymore? What if we had to use all the stuff we throw away to survive? You know, so we'd have to invent things for our kids to do. We'd have to um, function without some of the things that we have on a regular basis. We definitely start, you know, these bottles wouldn't be getting manufactured anymore. So we'd have to figure out a way to um, use them, you know. Um, the sculpture that I did last year was made out of recycled two liter bottles. Um, so this year I, d I decided that... You know, if we could do like a Recycle Wednesday where we do some kind of art project out of the things that we throw away, including these bottles and cardboard and, you know, uh, Amazon boxes. <laughs> We're going to make some Amazon um, castles, you know, out of all the boxes and containers that um, Amazon throws at us. Uh, so, yeah, so that's pretty much it um, for our painting today. I am going to sign my painting. I have decided that I am not going to be trying to um, sign my paint with or my painting with a paintbrush. So I'm just taking a pen and I'm just putting Cheryl. And what what year is this? This is 2020 and this is April. So I'm just going to do for 2020. And that's it. That's all. So um, you know what I'll do is I'll put a question in the Facebook group asking what's a good time on Wednesday to do Recycle Wednesday. Okay. I know you're working. What time do you get off, um, Laura? I mean, you know, <laughs> what time do you come off the clock at your house? At any rate, we'll vote on that time, and it'll be recorded, so you'll be able to see it if you can't make it while it's live. But yeah, all you need is uh, some cardboard, your paints, um, an empty water bottle, and um, you know we're going to do some art, recycled art on Wednesday. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you for supporting the arts. I mean, you're really helping me. And you're also having a little bit of fun, so um, <laughs> I appreciate you. And with that, Ginger and I will say so long. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait come over here. Ginger and I will say so long and farewell. Come here, Ginger. You're going to be on TV. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Can you come up here? Come on. There she is. <laughs> she loves to get her affection from her mommy. Say hi to Nina. Nina's here. Nina's here. <laughs> All right, good. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me. I will see you on Wednesday, Recycle Wednesday. Bye, Rachel. Bye, everybody.